Fred Van Vliet inking the biggest deal for an, an undrafted player in NBA history. Three years, $130 million. That's his max. Um, you know, I think the saying is that you can't buy class. I think you can in this instance. It's just going to cost you everything that you could possibly give in order to get it. Um, what's your just broad takeaway from probably, I would say, the biggest deal so far? Yeah, it's the only max contract that was signed so far as we're recording. I, you know, to be honest with you, Justin, I, I wasn't stunned by this. Um, all the reporting over the last few days was that Houston was gearing up to offer him a two year max. So we already knew that they were kind of in the ballpark money wise. Just how much of a commitment were they willing to give? And it was between that and it was between Toronto. So in my head, I was just more wondering if he was actually going to go to Houston, the worst, most dysfunctional on-court <laughs> product we had in the NBA last season, and take that money or take probably less annual money over a four-year deal from the team, the only team he's ever played for that developed him, that he, where he won a title, where he means so much. And yeah, my homie took the money and good for him. Uh, you know, bet on yourself, Red Van Fleet. A uh, lot of questions, though, I, I have for, I mean, first of all, I, I got to say, like, what is really fascinating about this to me, and I understand it for sure, but the Houston Rockets essentially were like, James Harden, Fred Van Fleet. We will take Fred Van Vliet. I, th I just think that right there is very interesting and it's understandable why age, uh, I guess you could say fit, right? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this roster is going to look like next season, to be honest with you. But uh, that right there really kind of stands out as just kind of a uh, really interesting organizational decision for the Houston Rockets. Yeah. With Harden, you're basically asking him to take over everything with your franchise. I, even if you don't ask him, he's probably going to do it by sheer yeah. force of personality and just the way he plays. Fred has always been the type of player for me that fit on so many different teams, particularly young teams like the Rockets or even Orlando, some of these other ones that got mentioned leading up to this contract because he could just do what he does without disrupting the progress of your young players. If you want Jalen Green to be this like dynamic occasional ball handler or whatever, like he could still be that and Fred could take a co-piloting role. If you want Alperin Shangun to finally become the Nikola Jokic South that I personally would love to see him be. And I think a lot of other people like that is still an option on the table. And so at the very least, they're not really disrupting what is ostensibly a young core and the future of their franchise. They're just kind of uh, bringing in a caretaker. And now Fred is basically passing up opportunities to, to compete for a title while doing so. But again, that's what the money is for. And so if this is what he wants and like, I can't blame him for it. I guess the question is, can he have a meaningful impact on a culture that like he hasn't been a part of? Cause as we know, he's been part of the, the Raptor system for so long. Can what made him so unique as a player and interesting as a player carry over to a new system, a new coach, a new group of players? Yeah. I mean, I think they were cultureless last season. <laughs> uh, I just like how they played basketball was just uh, antithetical to common sense. It was just we're going to shoot no passing and we're crashing the offensive glass and we're not getting back in transition. That was every single Houston Rockets game last year. And so what I think is really valuable here, you know, you can kind of criticize the Rockets for accelerating what could have been an organic rebuild. But I feel like they have enough pieces. It's been three years. They have a lot of cap space, $60 million. Uh, they have their top, their pick in 2024 is top four protected going to uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. They have every incentive to try to, to grow and progress next year. Um, and I just think like if you're Jabari Smith Jr., this is a godsend. If you're Shingun, like Fred Van Vliet pick and rolls with Alper and Shingun, I'm just going to be drooling watching that next season. I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing stuff. If you're Jalen Green, I actually, that's where I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. I'm not exactly positive how, because I think that 
Jalen Green's the one who actually needs to sacrifice more than the guy who just got the max. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think Jalen Green will have to play off the ball a little bit more. He'll have to, I mean, Ime Odoka has already said this, but like, if you're not defending, you're not going to play. And Ime Odoka, he doesn't care. Like, I think he will bench Jalen Green. I really do. So uh, I think just as someone who can hold teammates accountable, can say, hey, guys, like, I was undrafted. I won a title. I have a max contract. Um, so screw all of you. Like, follow me. Um, I think having that type of presence in a locker room is really helpful. And then also, nothing is kind of finished here in Houston. Um, but I like I like this move overall for all parties. Yeah. I think my question is, how much does it change the Rockets' bottom line? And on the one hand, I don't know how much they care about that because at the very least, they're going to be playing heavy minutes to a lot of young guys, including two of the draft picks that they took just a couple days ago. But as I'm looking at the West, and I'm saying even in a best case scenario where Green takes a step forward, maybe Kevin Porter Jr. just doesn't like go completely batshit off the rails as a result of this. I, I would be surprised if he lasts the entire offseason in Houston, considering some things that have happened with him over the, over the course of his career. But I think they're going to be better than the Spurs, but I'm not actually sure. And I'm looking at the rest of the West, the West, the Jazz, you know, the Pelicans, some of these other teams that finished toward the bottom, maybe the Blazers, depending on how things shake out there. But like, I would probably predict them to finish second worst in the West yet again. Man, that's yeah. Now I'm looking at the standings. And <laughs> I was like feeling really optimistic for Houston. And I did. Yeah, no, it's going to be tough. Uh, the West is an absolute bear. There's just like no really bad teams beyond and I like the Spurs maybe not maybe they won't be that bad like I wanted Fred to go to the Spurs and I actually thought that if he did they could compete for the a playing spot because I like a lot of the players in San Antonio and who knows how good Victor's going to be in year one um but yeah like a lot of question marks Portland with Dame um we're about to talk about Kyrie and his fit with Luca uh I think the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to be like really good next year with Chet and the might win a title. Yeah, <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, <laughs> um, I like Utah a lot. Uh, I think they're like super f- professional, and I like the John Collins addition, even if there's some p- positional overlap. So it's going to be it's going to be tough. I mean, they would need a lot of injury luck. They would need massive leaps from Jalen Green, from Jabari. Uh, the Thompson twin needs to be amazing. I'm going to learn their first names eventually, <laughs> but for now, they're just the Thompson twins for me still. They have um, a men, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, and maybe he's good. Right? Maybe Cam Whitmore is like amazing and looks like a lottery talent. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like I think in the short term, year one, it could be pretty, pretty gruesome. Uh, and then, you know, that's why you give them the three year deal, right? Like, so hopefully, uh, either those pieces who are young you can flip for more veteran established talent that are a little bit closer to Fred's timeline. Yeah. I don't know if that's the smartest move, but that's something you could do if you were serious about wanting to be competitive in the short term. Um, they have a little bit of flexibility here, though. And I think that everyone involved should still be like kind of patient. 